Hi guys, Dean here again. Um, whilst I'm in the uh, video making mood, I'll um, churn out another uh, vinyl arrivals. Um, this is going to be a bit of a mishmash of a few different things that I've picked up over the, uh, the last week or so. Um, so we'll get straight down to it. Uh, the first one is uh, one I mentioned from Record Store Day that I managed to uh, pick up a faulty copy. Um, but thankfully one of my uh, work colleagues who um, I work in Leeds and he works in Manchester three days a week. Um, as well as the Leeds office, so he uh, managed to pop into Piccadilly Records over in Manchester and they had a copy which is um, White Stripes Get Behind Me Satan, which is the uh, not sure if you can see that as it moves, it's the lenticular sleeve, so it changes the image. Um, it's a fantastic package, I mean, it's very pricey, sadly, but it was one of those, it was second on my list, the stuff I wanted. Um, and I was destined to have it. This comes on um, red and white vinyl, so I'll show the red disc. They've got custom labels and so forth on there. So, um, not one I've um, cleaned up and listened to yet, but uh, looking forward to spinning that one. But I thought I'd just show you guys that I managed to get that RSD stuff. Um, so yeah, so that was um, everything off the RSD list, which is great. Um, oh, talking of the RSD stuff as well. Um, let's get the movements. So everybody's happy in the household now. They've got that. <laughs> right, so next, um, let's pick up a couple of um, bits and bobs from a few years back. Um, First of all was the Kaiser Chiefs, yours truly Angry Mob, which um, was advertised as um, pretty much bought, never used, really good nick, bar a couple of issues with the, um, the open uh, area there. But as you can see, there's quite a nasty bend on there. I wonder how that's occurred. Well, basically, the, um, the chap that I bought it from um, decided to send it to me a week later. Um, rather than patching it up quite nicely, he um, apparently works across the road from a courier company and he just said, Send this to this guy, please. Pack, he did ask apparently to pack it up, um, and all they did was pop it into a plastic bag, and um, that's what I got basically. So I'm assuming. The guy gets it out of the van and picks it up by the corner. The whole corner was literally bent back um, when I received it. So I've obviously straightened it out since. Um, and I was livid to say the least, to be honest. Um, I do love the Kaiser Chiefs and um, picked this up quite a nice price, which is the only reason I still have it, actually. Um, I sent an email to the guy and just sort of said, just give me a refund. You know, obviously you have no appreciation of how to pack vinyl records, which I know a lot of people on eBay don't, that's the downside to vinyl on eBay, that you might get a good price and it might be in good condition, but then you're reliant on the way they send stuff through you, you on the post office, so there's a lot of factors in the middle of that buying process that can go wrong, which um, why well, I do tend to pick stuff up from record fairs and or dealers' shops now instead, but at least you know what you're dealing with then, at least you know that it's in your hands, it's down to you to get it home safely. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite apologetic, but he said obviously, you know, he did leave it to the courier company, he should have done it himself. Um, and then I sort of calmed down a bit, realised that I should have got this quite cheap. Um, the records themselves look and play, they're a bit dusty, but um, give them a clean, I think it'll be as good as new. So it's a bit annoying about that, but you know, at the end of the day, you don't play the covers, do you? Like Dr. Dave Watts says. Um, so yeah, you know, mixed, mixed feelings about that one, but we'll see. Hopefully, it'll. Um, be fine. Um, another early pressing, which was, I think was yeah, 1997, um, just Catatonia's International Velvet. Um, mentioned this to uh, Armian over at Audio File Laws that picked this one up. Um, I'm sure that's just been put on there by somebody, it's a promotional copy only, but um, this is the two disc um, version. It's got the Steve Lamax sessions on it as well. Um, yeah, cracking album. Really happy to have this one on vinyl. I won't mind getting the other copy actually because the inner sleeves are slightly different. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I go this, the, these still command a you know, fair price on eBay, so and again, it's not one I tend to see at fairs or anything with dealers, um, but this one plays beautifully, it's um, yeah, fantastic. So that's Castonia, great band. Um, <laughs> and this one, um, yeah, I was going, I went down to um. On Thursday, um, there's a deal that goes on Leeds Market, so lunchtime tends to pop down occasionally, probably every sort of two, three, four weeks maybe, and just see what it's got because um, it doesn't have a, a great amount of stuff in there. And I picked up this Meatloaf Battle of Hell 2. And I was thinking when I saw it, I'm thinking, I've seen this on eBay going for stupid amounts of money. Um, and I quit checking my phone, yeah, I mean, it's like looking third, between 30 and 60 pounds. Um, that stuff had gone on, there wasn't a copy on eBay at that time. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, I thought this was quite expensive, so I looked at the price and it was three pounds. So I assumed they'd obviously missed a zero on off the end of it, but then everything else in that bin was quite cheap you know, two, three, four, five pounds. Um, so I picked it up, says the guy, it's three pounds, yeah, he said, oh, yeah, three pounds. So bought it, so I brought it home, cleaned it, played it. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm aware of the songs um, on here anyway. Um, most of the songs I've got from the Pandora's Box um, album that Jim Steinman did with the um, four female vocalists, which is fantastic, by the way. If you haven't got it, pick it up. Um, far better than the Meatloaf versions, but it's one of those. I just wanted to, you know, complete the collection of some of the Meatloaf stuff I've got. Um, but it's horrendous. The pressing is absolutely horrendous, and I didn't realise this until I started looking into it, thinking, is it just this copy that's really, really bad? Um, and obviously a lot of people complain about the vinyl pressing that they literally put about 35 minutes on each side which is why the volume is so low but as soon as you crank it up any imperfections on the vinyl will just get amplified um, so it's just it's, it's almost unlistenable um, but three pounds you know great um, the one the first to go if I need to make a bit of money um, stick it on eBay for some um, somebody to pay 40 50 pounds for but three pounds I thought yeah certainly the bargain of the year so far as far as monetary goes but absolutely awful disc to listen to just could not listen to it at all but I thought I'd share that one anyway out of interest um right a couple more uh, this is Blur's new album a mirror on the back for some reason and um, this is a double album and um, not listened to this one yet just picked it up uh, early on in the week when it came out, um, but I've heard a couple of tracks from this already, um, so I know the album's you know, got some good signs. So, um, so yeah, that should be really good. It's a nice heavyweight package with um, a nice um, textured sleeve. That's the word I was looking for. Um, it's a really nice artwork on it. Um, actually, actually, I wasn't going to open this up to the sort of crazy. Obi style doesn't quite slip over the side, so it's a nightmare to put back in. But for you guys, I'll show you the package because it is really, really nice. You've got the gatefold there, and then you've got um, inner sleeves on there with the uh, writing on there. It comes with a full size. Uh, Double-sided poster, which is on there, so that's really nice. Um, and the uh, discs come with custom labels as well, so um, sort of replicating what the uh, the actual uh, inner sleeves are as well. And as you can see, the second one is pretty much the same. You've got details of where the tracks were recorded and written. There. So that's a, it's a really nice package. Um, so looking forward to listening to that one. So that should be good. Uh, next up, we have um, nipped in on Friday uh, to um, Relics Records in Leeds, and they um, never normally get a huge amount of time to spend in there. Normally, it's just like a quick lunch hour, get in there, get back out. But had about half an hour to spend this time around. So, um, so I picked up this for a start. It's got some slight sticker damage there. Um, but yeah, this one is um, it's a 
12 inch version of Empire and the reason I picked it up was that it had a cover of the Scarborough Fair on it which I think it came out in the extended CD version but it wasn't available on vinyl anywhere else so I've been looking around for this for a while now picked it up for £3 which I thought was great um, the disc itself is pretty much brand new condition so um, so yeah, listened to that yesterday, I think it sounds superb, always thought their cover of Scarborough Fair was really really good so always like the early Queensryche stuff um, not such a big fan now, Jeff Taylor's left, I think he was the one of the key members of the band really um, his vocal styling is what his writing style so, so really happy to have that one um, picked up uh, Roland Kirk um, which is the uh, inflated tier. I think um, Mark, Dr. Deadwax, featured this in his 100 jazz um, pile um, last week. And uh, this is the uh, Plum and Orange yeah, uh, Atlantic label. So it's the first pressing. Um, really nice copy as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that was, that was quite cheap as well. And from the same place, uh, it picked up. Last, don't judge me on this. Um, I've not had a copy of this so far because I've been waiting for a really nice copy to pop along. And although this isn't a really nice copy, um, this is the uh, version on uh, Chrysalis Green. It's nice, it's always um, the Aqualung pressing has always confused me. And I've looked on Discogs and I've looked um, elsewhere on the internet as to. Which is the best pressing to buy? Which is the uh, the first pressing? And this is the uh, green logo with the white eye on it. Um, wasn't in bad condition at all. I mean, the uh, the cover itself is a bit beat up. Um, but this plays I played it thoroughly through yesterday. Um, it plays quite nicely. There's a bit of crack and pop all uh, in some of the quieter parts. Um, but um, other than that, yeah, sounds fine. Um, so yeah, maybe you guys can um, expand on the Aqualung um, scenario as to which one, sound-wise, is the best pressing. I know a lot of people really like the 30th anniversary version. But I'm just thinking more of the original pressing side of things. Um, is this the original pressing? Does it come with the white eyes? Some people say it comes without the white eye on it. Um, some people say the Pink Rim Island one is really nice copy to get um, so yeah if any of you guys can advise best sounding version of Aqualong from the early days then uh, let me know do you notice as well I'm also using some different inner sleeves now um, got these from Bags XL um, which meant to be like the Blake sleeves I mean they do a lot that's where I get all my Blake star sleeves from I'm not sure if they are Blake sleeves but I think they're made by a different company um, but they're based in the Netherlands so we'll see how these go um, they're a lot cheaper than the Mobile Fidelity ones, but um, I do like the Mobile Fidelity ones, but I think these are a bit thicker, but also a bit a bit bigger as well, which some sleeves, like the Roland Kirk one, they don't quite fit back into, but um, we'll see, see how I get on with them. So, yeah, that's it for now. Um, I think that covers everything that I've bought so far. Um, thanks again for watching. Um, good luck in the previous video for the competition, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.